Okay, so here is um, example eight out of class four. This just seems like there's way too much stuff in here. I don't know how to uh, condense this. Must be got to split this thing up into another class. I think I'm making the call. We'll see after class tonight, and this might be uh, converted into video for class five because it doesn't make sense to cram too much in there. You can only digest so much. And I would like to have some of the SolidWorks stuff uh, added in. Mm. Okay, but anyway. Um, so here is uh, the scenario, and it's, this is like probably, th this right here I think is one of the best examples because it really gives you sort of a, a sense of that this looks like something that you'd want to do, right? Um, I almost think of this as being like in a foundry or something, or maybe in Rube Goldberg where we're collecting stuff out of a bucket. Maybe it's molten metal, or maybe it's just dishwashing liquid, and we're going to uh, collect it, and then we're going to dump it, right? So. And it, it, we have to make sure that it gets over the corner, right? So it's good that we have, if we just did it between point uh, A, B and uh, at, at, at point one, and then we did it to A, B at point two, we might accidentally design it so that it would run, it would hit, this bucket would hit the corner, right? It's possible. So by putting this third position in there, we make sure that we're getting it so it could dump correctly. I will tell you that I've tried to design this so that this was more like horizontal before it got over there and it just led to chaos. But um, be interesting to, see, to, to get you guys to try to, to minimize this, right? And try to figure out a, a design that you could make it to where you could dump the thing out, but it wasn't spilling too much as it was trying to get over a corner. It's a challenge. So let's take a look at um, the sheet here and uh, try to do all of this. All right, so here away we go. Uh, uh, we want to go from A1 to A2, and this is hard to uh, quite see where that is, so we want to be careful in there right, so that it could really kind of overlaps uh, this. Um, so let's. Find a okay, so right there we lightly draw a line and we do the same thing for A two and A three. These two things intersect. Has to be the ground, right? So let's make sure that we uh, draw this in here. Between here and here, has to be the ground. It almost is a bad idea to draw that dashed line in there because there's going to be too much chaos. Uh, we can erase some stuff maybe a little bit, but let's see if we can get away without it. Let's do the same thing between B1 and B2. And then do B2 to B3. Okay. Let's find... This is hard because there's so many okay so let's make it let's eyeball it where we think it's gonna be somewhere down in there right? so uh, because it's between here and here so right in there and right in here so we go B2 Right there and right there. Okay. Let's 
So there's that line. Now let's take B2, which we already had right over there. All right, but I'm extending him back up over that, that side. And I'm going to come back over this side over here. And now let's take B3. Oh, and I didn't get far enough over B2. Right there, okay. So, right there, that's the spot. Let me double check. B2 is coming right in there. B3 is right in there. Okay. So, like I said, there's a lot of chaos. But you can see that right there at that spot is the location of the other connection point. Right? That's between here. So that's got to be here to here. Right? So that constitutes our grounds. Call that O2. Call that O4. And maybe we draw uh, the dashed lines in now. Same thing for B2. Right in here. And what we want to do now is probably connect a dyad to this link that's between a2, O2, and A2 right there. That will make it cycle back and forth between uh, this third position, first position and third position. We have to carefully choose where um, we're going to be here because the proportion where we make this connection along here, along this, because that's going to determine some of the grash off. And if we're forced to make it land onto the body here, we can't make it up too high because now the proportions are going to be messed up. So um, I'm going to be like maybe make it make the rocker pretty sh shallow here. And I don't have it as being quick return. Quick return might help us a little bit because then we can maybe move the ground uh, for the dyad, uh, the ground location, maybe move him downwards some. And right here though is where I've chosen. Um, and I don't think this is necessarily the midway point. I think we have to choose a midway point. Um, that's part of this right here. So let me uh, bisect this arc or try to and with all the chaos that's going on in here I'll put it right there and hopefully right here yep you can see that we have not bisected this line not with what we have available to us so we move this right there okay so that right there is the halfway point and if we're going to make a crank, it's going to be that length. And nothing says we we need to have the ground for the crank here, but just to kind of stretch things out a little bit. Well, you know what I didn't do in that previous example? I didn't figure out the transmission angle, which is kind of a really good idea, right, to be very thorough into that. And I should, uh, 
you know this all the way up to there. So right here is when, and right here, it's right there. We call that 06 right here. And I will draw it in the overlapped um, condition here. And what would be a good idea is to find the transmission angle. So like to, to, to find that angle right there is that that would be the transmission angle, right? Um, no. <laughs> uh, the transmission angle, yes, yes, right? Yeah. We want to find the angle that forms between here because we want to make sure that we could get uh, uh, figure out how much it is. See, you could actually see from right here how that's not a very good transmission angle because it, it, it's going to be quite uh, acute right in there. And then likewise when it comes down here. So right here it's probably going to be pushing force, putting a force onto this right here. And when it gets to here it's going to now it's going to need to pull it back up. So we would be a really good idea to try to figure out what the torque of that would be uh, get considering a load. Like we might want to like figure out how much that bucket is, how much that bucket weighs. And so we might do that in the statics portion of this thing. It would be a good exercise to do. Um, difficult, but worthwhile, I think, because it's closer to reality. So um, let's see how much time we have left in here. All right, that took us 12 minutes to do. I think I'm going to make separate videos for um, doing this in SolidWorks. Yes. And I think we're going to break this up into classes four and five. So I'm going to shift some things. Let's see what that does in the schedule. Hmm. Let's see what we can get done today in class and then probably shift things. It'll probably mess up your notes a bit. It is what it is. We want to make the thing a worthwhile class. So. We're done.